In this video, we'll go on a quest to make the best questing system the world has ever seen, or at least a working one. But first, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with more than 25,000 quality classes on game development, tech, and more. If, for example, you're making a 2D game, you can check out this really cool course on how to make 2D video game art. This will teach you how to make characters, animations, backgrounds, and all in all, how to make custom graphics for your game. Skillshare is the perfect platform to keep learning and thriving, and a premium Skillshare membership gives you unlimited access to all classes for less than $10 a month. Join more than 7 million other creators by simply clicking the link in the description, and the first 500 people will receive their first two months for free. Also, I am super excited to announce that the community is hosting another Brackies Game Jam. <laughs> the jam will start on February 16th and ends a week later on February the 23rd. The theme will be announced when the jam starts. I encourage all of you to go join now. Everything is hosted on itch and I'll have a link in the description to where you can read more and join the event. And if you've never participated in a jam before, I really cannot recommend it enough. It's a great way to challenge yourself in a completely stress-free environment. After all, game jams are all about having fun. I'll definitely be participating myself and we're also planning to make a video about our favorite entries once the jam is over. I recommend visiting the Game Jam channel on our Discord where people are going to be talking about the event and posting progress updates as we go along. There's of course a link for that in the description as well. Now, questing systems are one of those mechanics that vary a lot depending on the game, both in terms of how you find them, what you should do to complete them, and also what rewards you get from doing so. However, I've gone ahead and created a really simple game that we will use as an example to build our questing system on top of. And I'll of course make sure to show you how you can go about implementing it in your own game. With that said, let's start questing. Greetings, traveler. So as you can see, I've gone ahead and created a simple example scene. Here we have a canvas with a player window that is currently displaying information about our player. We have the health, experience, some gold, and the player has two actions. He can either fight or he can try to pick up a quest. To represent the player, I have an empty object with a player script. And as you can see, we have the health, experience, and gold here. If we open up the player script, we can see how I've implemented this. It's just three basic public ints, and then we also have this function for going into battle. This is called whenever we press the fight button on the UI and it's simply going to subtract one health because we probably lost some health in the fight, give us a tiny bit of experience and a tiny bit of gold. And that's really all there is to the game right now. If we go ahead and play, you can see that I can press this fight button and the health is gonna go down and the experience and gold is gonna go up a tiny bit. However, if I hit the quest button, nothing happens. So now it's up to us to create the questing system. Also, the UI that I'm using is from the Ultimate Game UI pack from the Unity Asset Store. If you want to pick it up for yourself, I'll of course have a link to where you can get it in the description. Now, the first thing that we want to do for our questing system is to define what a quest is. I've gone ahead and created some UI for this. Again, this is just completely placeholder UI. There's no scripting involved here. So my window basically has room for a quest title, a description of the quest, some kind of experience reward, a gold reward, and a button to accept the quest. So let's try and implement these parameters through script. We'll go to the project, create a new c -sharp script, and let's call it quest. Let's double click it to open it up in Visual Studio. And let's go ahead and remove the two functions. And we also don't want it to derive from mono behavior, so we'll go ahead and remove that as well. Now the first thing that we're going to need is a string with the title. So we'll create a public string with the title of the quest. We'll also create a public string with the description. We'll create a public int for the experience reward and another public int for the gold reward. Again, what you want to have here completely depends on your game. You can fill in extra variables or remove some if you want. It's completely up to you. We also need a variable to determine whether this quest is currently active. So let's go to the top here and create a public bool called is active. And that's all we'll do for the quest at the moment. So let's save that and head back into Unity. And the next thing that we want is to have some kind of way for the player to get the quest. And this is of course again going to depend on your game. In our case, we are just gonna press the quest button and we are gonna get a quest. However, in many games there are NPCs that you need to talk to in order to get quests, or maybe even items that you need to find that will set you on new quests. So how you want to trigger this is completely up to you. I'm gonna go ahead and create an empty object, which is going to be our quest giver. And let's go ahead and create a quest giver script on this object. 
Let's double click it to open it up in Visual Studio. Again, we'll remove the two functions here. We do want this to derive from mono behavior. And first of all, this quest giver needs a quest to give away. So we'll create a public quest. And here we're referencing the script that we just created. So the quest is going to hold all of these variables. And let's just call it quest. It's probably also a good idea that our quest giver has access to our player so that when he wants to give the quest to our player, we can reference him and actually set the quest. So let's also create a public player and let's just call it player. And if we just save this right now without writing any extra logic, we should be able to go into Unity and our quest giver now has the field for our player. So we can simply take our player object and drag it in there. However, we're not able to currently see our quest here. And that's weird because we should have a title and description and some rewards, but they're not currently showing up. The reason for this is that if we want this stuff to show up in Unity, we first need to mark the quest class as system.serializable. This way Unity knows that it can serialize these fields and so they will show up in the inspector. And indeed it does. Now under our quest here, we can define all these values. So I'm gonna give it a title. I'm gonna call it on the hunt. For the description, I'm gonna write venture out into the wild and kill three enemies to get the reward. As the experience reward, I'll set 30. And for the gold, I'm gonna set 780. And by default, I don't want this to be active. So now that we have a reference to our player and we've created a quest, we're ready to define what's gonna happen whenever this quest is given. So in my case, I'd like to do this in two steps. The first one is whenever we press quest, I want a quest window to pop up. Then the player has the option to accept this quest. And if he does, the quest is going to be given to the player. If not, nothing's gonna happen. So to do this, I'm gonna disable the quest window and I'm gonna go into our quest giver script and I'm gonna make a function called public void open quest window. And to open this window, we first need a reference to it. So I'm gonna create a public game object. I'm gonna call it quest window. And now inside of our function, we can basically say quest window dot set active to true. We also want to make sure that we update all the info on our quest window. So inside of our quest window, we of course have the title text, the description, the experience in gold. So let's go ahead and create references for this. We'll create a public text. And in order to access the text type, we need to be using unity engine dot UI. And we'll call this title text. Also create another public text. We'll call this one description text. Create another one, you guessed it, experience text and gold text. Then when we open the quest window, we'll go ahead and set title text dot text equal to quest dot title. We'll do the same for description text dot text, set it equal to quest dot description. Experience text dot text equals quest dot experience reward. And since this is an integer, we need to do dot to string to convert it into a string. And we'll do the same thing with gold text. Awesome. So if we save this, go into Unity and select our quest giver, we now have fields for all this stuff. So for our quest window, we'll drag in the window itself. For our title text, we'll drag in the UI title here. We'll drag in the description, XP and gold. And if we now disable this quest window and go into our player window and select the quest button, we can add an on-click event. So I'm going to add a new one. I'm going to put in our quest giver here. And I'm going to make it so that whenever we press this button, we're going to go to our quest giver and call the open quest window function. And this is again one of those examples where you might not want to do this using a button on the UI. You might want to do this when you speak to an NPC or when you reach a certain level. That's completely up to you. But just for simplicity's sake, I'm calling this through the UI. So if we now play, and hit the quest button, we can see that a window pops up. It says on the hunt, venture out into the wild and kill three enemies to get the reward. We have 30 XP as a reward and 780 gold. If we press accept, nothing happens. So that's the next thing that we should do. We should go ahead and create a public void here. Let's call this one accept quest. And when we do this, we want to go quest window dot set active to false. So disabling the quest window again. We also want to set the quest to active because we've now accepted it. So quest that is active equals true. And finally, we want to give this quest to our player. So how do we most efficiently do this? Well, one way would be to simply go to our player script and create a variable here of type quest 
called quest. This way, inside of our quest giver script, we can simply go player dot quest equals the quest. Really, really simple. Of course, this will only allow you to have one quest at a time. If you want to have multiple quests, you can simply turn this into a list where you can just add quests at runtime. But for now, let's keep it at one. So now in the UI, we need to go to the quest window and find the accept button. And whenever we click on this, we want to go to the quest giver and access the function called accept quest. If we play this, we should see that if we press a quest, hit accept, and then select our player, he now has a quest that is active with all the information that we've given. Awesome. So the final thing that's left to do is to track our progress in this quest. In other words, we need to define some kind of quest goal that we can try to reach. Because right now we can fight as many times as we want, we're never gonna reach the end of this quest. So to do that, let's go ahead and create a separate script. Let's create a C-sharp script and let's call it quest goal. I'm gonna double click on this. Again, we wanna remove the two functions. And also this shouldn't derive from mono behavior. Now you're probably going to have different goals for different types of quests. Some quests are gathering quests where you need to go and find as many objects as possible. Others are kill quests where you need to kill a bunch of enemies, sometimes of a certain type. And depending on the type of goal, there are different actions that we need to take to further our progress in the quest. Now there are definitely multiple ways to set this up. We're gonna take a fairly simple route here using enums to define the goal type, but you could definitely also do this using inheritance. In fact, if that's the way you wanna go, I'm gonna have a link in the description to a series that shows you how to do that. So first we need to define the different types of goals. To do this, we'll go under the class and create a public enum, and we'll call it gold type. And here we can define the different types. We're gonna have a kill quest, a gathering quest. You could easily import more here, such as an escort quest, or maybe actually not that one. I've played too much World of Warcraft to include that one. So once you've defined the different types, we can go to the top here and we can create a public gold type, and let's call it gold type. We'll also need a way to keep track of our progress in the quest. So we'll go public int required amount and public int current amount. So if we need to kill three enemies, we'll set required amount to three. And whenever current amount is three or more, the quest is complete. Let's actually create a quick function for checking this. So let's create a public bold because we're gonna return true or false. And let's call it is reached to check if the goal has been reached. Here we can simply return and the boolean that we want to return is current amount is greater than or equal to required amount. And if you've never seen this syntax before, we're basically just saying that if this here is true, so if our current amount is equal to or exceeds the required amount, then we'll return true for this function. If not, then we'll return false. So it's pretty cool shorthand syntax. We also need to go to the top here and mark this class as system.serializable because we want to be able to edit it inside of the inspector. And if we now go into our quest and at the bottom here, we'll go ahead and add a public quest goal and we'll just call it goal and save this. We can go into Unity and select our quest giver. And we can now see that under our quest, we also have this goal. We can select a goal type between kill and gathering. I'm just gonna leave this one at kill and the required amount. Let's set that to three for this quest. Really, really cool. But how do we increase the current amount? Well, to do this, we could go into the player script and whenever our player goes into battle, we lose some health and gain some experience and some gold, but we also kill an enemy. So this is probably a good place to access our quest and let it know that we've killed an enemy. To do that, we'll write if quest.isActive. We only want to do this if we've accepted the quest. In that case, we can go quest.goal. And here we want to trigger some kind of function inside of our goal that lets it know that we've killed an enemy. So let's go into our quest goal and let's create a public void enemy killed. And here we can simply take the current amount and increase it by one. But of course, we don't wanna do this if this is a gathering quest. So if the goal type is set to gathering, then we don't want to further our quest by killing an enemy. So let's just create a quick if statement here saying that we only want to do this if the goal type is equal to goal type dot kill. And if that's the case, well then we'll increase the current amount. If you want the quest to only be about certain types of enemies, this would also be a good place to do it. You could, for example, give all the enemies for this quest a certain tag and then pass in the tag of the enemy killed as an argument 
And then in here, you could check if the tag of the enemy killed corresponds to the tag for this quest. So you can see how this is fairly modular. You could also go ahead and do pretty much the same thing for items. So if this was a gathering quest, well then instead of an enemy killed, we could do an item collected. And in this case, we only want to increase the current amount if the gold type is equal to gold type dot gathering. So it's really easy to expand upon this with other types of quests. Again, this is not as solid as using inheritance, but it will get you pretty far. So now we can go into our player and now we have a function here. So quest.gold.enemyKilled will simply call that function. And we can even check if we completed the quest by doing so. So if reached, well then we just completed the quest and we can go ahead and increase our experience. So we'll say experience plus equals quest.experience reward gold plus equals quest.gold reward. And we also probably want to mark our quest as complete. So let's go quest.complete. And this is not a function that we've created yet. So let's save that, go into our quest. And let's create some kind of complete function here. So public void complete. And for this example, we'll set is active to false so that we don't have the quest anymore. And let's also just throw out a debug.log saying that the title of the quest was completed. And that should be the end of our questing system. If we now go into Unity, hit play, take a look at our player here, we can currently see that we don't have an active quest or this is empty and the quest is not active. If we then hit the quest button, a window appears. If we accept it, we get the quest on the player. We can then fight a few enemies and you can see each time we do, the current amount in our goal goes up and once it reaches three, we get a bunch of experience, a bunch of gold, and it says down here that the quest on the hunt was completed. Yay! From here, it's really up to you to implement this system into your own game, come up with a bunch of fun quest types, and really just go nuts with it. This is not a perfect fully fledged system, but it should act as a good baseline to build upon. Again, if you want to go more in depth with your questing system, I will have a link in the description to where you can learn more about how you can use inheritance and delegates to make it even more solid. But I'm just going to stick with this for now. That's pretty much it for this video. If you haven't already joined the Brackies Game Jam, I definitely recommend you do so now. And don't forget to check out Skillshare. Simply click the link in the description to get started. Other than that, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. <laughs> so thanks to all of the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in January, and a special thanks to James P, Jack Stubert, Andrew Kalenko, John Shannon, Infinity PBR, Cyborg Mummy, Dennis Sullivan, Travis Dillon, Faisal Marify, Leo Lissette, Ronin, Clinton Van Skira, Chris, Gregory Pierce, Kill Swedeski, Rob Farron, Tim Folderbach, and Erasmus. You guys rock!